Hi everyone, I am Dr. Ann Pendo, Senior Medical Director for Experience of Caring at Intermountain Healthcare. I'm excited today to speak with Mary Harris, the uh, APP Director of Professional Development and Education at Intermountain Healthcare, and it is National Advanced Practice Provider Week, so we are so happy that you are here today. Thank you. Thanks for having me. I've been looking forward to it. Yeah, it'll be. Um, well, I'm looking forward to our conversation. So you have a job at the beginning of the year, and then COVID happens. Describe for us a little bit of what your job was like before, and then once COVID happened, how did things change? Sure. So I work part-time clinically. I'm a nurse practitioner with the um, urology group here at Intermountain Medical Center, and I see patients two days a week. And also the other three days I work with the um, – you know, other APP directors and Chris Heyer, the executive director for APPs, to help uh, do exactly that. My the things that my title um, talks about: professional development and education. So after, before COVID, it was you know business as usual, seeing patients two days a week, dropping kids off, picking them up, um, just you know doing activities, and then after, um, it became very clear things were going to be largely home based. So uh, setting up offices for me and kids at home and desks and charts and things to do to keep us busy and safe. And then, you know, the, the care back in March was different for my, my practice. So a lot of my patients I, I wasn't able to see because they were considered elective or maybe at risk. So that, that really changed too. But the volume of people that I was able to be seen in, in March and April, April was pretty low. But now that that's changed, um, so I'm thankful for for that um, piece that my clinical work has picked up, and we can um, work out safe ways to still see patients. But I still am working the other three days just right from home. And if I remember correctly, you stepped into an ask as we were anticipating a great need for shifting where mm. our physicians and APPs were working. I think you had a role in implementing or creating a strategy for that. Yeah. Um, so it became clear that we're, we were going to need to staff and train uh, APPs to be able to flex into uh, hospital settings uh, where they may not have had experience there uh, to help uh, support some of the surges that were anticipated and now are happening. So we developed a, a quick onboarding, a just-in-time training for APPs to become not proficient, but aware of hospital medicine principles. And we also did a module for critical care. So those are still live online, being used actively now so that we can have that support for APPs that are going into those areas to help support uh, the volumes that, that we're seeing. What was the response like from the teams that you were working with when you brought up the idea of becoming familiar with hospital medicine or critical care medicine through that just-in-time training? You know, it was really amazing. The response was, you know, I'm hesitant. I don't know this, but I want to, and I will do it. I, mean, I saw a lot of courage and a lot of excitement and a lot of, uh, of APP partners who embraced that challenge and really uh, put a lot of effort and meaning into their lives to, to be able to flex up and have that opportunity. I think about, I think about that time, which mm -hmm. seems like so long ago, and there was such a sense of urgency. And as I think about the work that you all did creating that um, strategy, that program, and then implementing it, um, what would you say that you were doing during that time, you've got two little kids or two <laughs> school-age kids, and you're working from home and um, trying to be present for your patients. Um, how were you taking care of yourself? I'll be honest. At first, I I really wasn't, um, and thankful for you know programs that you have, and also thankful for some of my other APP leaders who are close friends who saw things um, kind of not right with with Mary's land. <laughs> so, um, you know, gentle reminders 
um, getting kind of employee and friend resource, resource groups together to, che to text each other, to call each other, to check in on each other. So it was really a, a reminder of some of the, the lovely things that are in place in Inner Mountain and, and my friends in Inner Mountain to remind me to do those things. Um, and now it becomes routine. Now, now it's, I, I, I just do those things that I know I need to do to, to be present. And, you know, for everyone, it's different. And I think I remember you saying one time, you have the individual, you have to take responsibility for it. No one can do self care for you. Yeah. I can't call, you know, and get, um, e it's, no one can call EAP for me. No one can get on the bike for me. No one can eat healthy for me. So it was really just that task, taking that task to myself and um, still today being accountable to my friends and others that I'm doing it. I love that because it, it really demonstrates the um, how we take care of each other mm -hmm. and a reminder to take care of ourselves, which I think is really a challenge in healthcare. And, um, you know, needing to be better about that. Tell us a little bit about your kids. How have they adjusted to homeschooling and having you home more? Um, we are probably closer than ever. Um, at first, I think it, it, it's challenging to, to be in a role that they're not used to mom being in as home homeschool helper. And, <laughs> you know, I don't know the math that they're doing, even though they're only eight, it's just a different way of thinking than when I was eight. Um, so it's been adjustment. It's been, uh, we, we take a lot of breaks. We made resource boards at home, each one of us, so that if we're stressed or overwhelmed or, ha you know, frustrated, we go to those resource boards and we take a minute. We are um, active biker, walker, you know, around the neighborhood, going on um, our evening post-dinner uh, bike rides and walks have been one of the best things I think about uh, about this is just being able to spend that time together. And um, I, th I think it'll be interesting to see how they transition back into mm -hmm. when it's safe, you know, trans transition into more of like playing with friends and other families and um, because we are so close and yeah. they are very close. I love that. What is one thing that is on your resource board? Um, for me, it's exercise. So uh, I invested in a home bike and it's been fantastic for me to, to look forward to those classes and make myself accountable to, to do one. And um, that's just for me personally, something that just uh, gets a lot of energy out. I'm able to think and clear my mind and I feel fantastic when, it, when it's done. That's so great. So as we end our time together today, share with us what you've learned about yourself as a person and as a leader. I think our audience is gonna be really interested to hear more from you. Um, as a person, I have learned, I think going back to the self-care piece is that I do need to prioritize myself mm -hmm. and make sure that those things are done. Nothing, Nothing works well when mama's not happy, right? So work doesn't happen. <laughs> Patients don't get connections. Kids can feel that, um, and I feel it. Um, and as a leader, one of the things that's really just struck me as I've seen other leaders and I've had to do this myself is to have courage, mm. to lead boldly, to um, ask questions that may not feel um, nice to ask, but need to be asked and learning ways to lead with that courage and lead, lead boldly, uh, even from, you know, the little desk space remotely from home. Yeah. Very practical suggestions <laughs> to practice and script. Yeah. Thanks so much for being with us today. Thank you. And thanks all of you for being with us at Leadership at the Forefront of COVID. Bye now. See you next week.